So we have Scott Stern here, uh, who is Global Director of fin Finance Solutions at OneStream Software. And Scott uh, will uh, show us his vision and uh, his thought leadership on the future of FPNA predictive analytics and machine learning. And before we start, I would like to say that I see more and more cases of using uh, machine learning for forecasting in the company. So at each 27 chapters of FPNA board, uh, the number of people that experiment or even using this, it's already started. Scott, uh, I would like to give the microphone to you. You're welcome. Your presentation is starting right now. That's great. Uh, thanks, Larissa. Thank you very much, Alex. On behalf of the OneStream team around the world, um, for those of you on the line, we, we really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today on a personal level. FPNA is near and dear to my heart. I uh, spent the first part of my career in this space, and so thanks for everything you guys are doing every day. As Larissa said, finance groups are really coming a long way if you look at kind of the previous generation in terms of backward looking, focus on closing the books and, and kind of where we're going in terms of modern finance. Just think about the topic today. We're talking about machine learning, predictive analytics. We use vernacular around strategic business partnership. And while we've absolutely come a long way, I think it's also fair to say that the way we got here is going to be different from the path that we're going to take going forward, right? Think about the legacy tools we've used in the past. They're very process oriented, very fragmented in terms of how we close the books, how we plan. But in this next phase, as Larissa and as Alex are talking about, I think we're going to be leveraging technology. I know we're going to be leveraging technology in new ways that are really going to help us bring insight into these drivers and this driver based planning processes. So one important point I wanted to make clear, right? We think about drivers. These are elements that actually help us make decisions, right? We want to be able to impact and take action within our organizations. And that's what drivers help us do, right? To bake operational decisions and then understand what they mean from a financial perspective. And as we think about moving forward with new technologies like predictive analytics and ML and others, now the question becomes, well, what insights about these drivers do we have that allow us to have some strategic dialogue about our future performance. So incredibly important topic today. And uh, again, we appreciate the opportunity. Next slide. At the same time, while many of us talk about the promise of predictive analytics and machine learning, and I think the, the first polling question made this very clear, it's also interesting to look at what data is actually saying about the importance finance puts on this today. So here's a quick chart that we have that illustrates how organizations are viewing the importance of data science and machine learning. And what you see here is kind of an interesting trend. It's like over 50% of organizations see data science and ML as critical or very important. But at the same time, finance still tends to lag these other functions, right? In fact, if you look at this data, only 20%, less than 20% of teams, finance teams, see predictive analytics and ML as critical, right? Pretty important and interesting point given how much we're all hearing about this today. Next slide. So in my last three years, I've had the opportunity, fortunately, to, to meet folks all over the globe, just like you guys. And, and I've kind of come down to a really simple point, and that is that although we hear a lot about this, and although we hear a lot about these use cases, it's not yet crystal clear what these advanced analytics are actually going to mean for finance folks on a day in and day out basis. What does it mean for our roles? What does it mean for our teams, right? How do these technologies fit within our core processes, right? How do we rationalize this to make this part of what we do? So there's this big question on usability and ease of use. And if you look at this chart here, you'll see that the data validates this as well. And so while there's no question of the potential across these use cases, 
one of the things I wanted to stress today, uh, particularly for FP&A folks, is I think it's really important to take a step back and ask a very simple question. What are we trying to achieve with this, right? Of course, there's an element of financial accuracy, of operational accuracy, of getting our drivers accurate. And I think for me, and I think you see this with the Guardian story, advanced analytics also offer a way to change the dialogue with our business partners, right? To ask and find another way to ask why, to remove bias. And as all of you know, if you're an FP&A leader, you may never get credit for this. I always say that, but driving meaningful dialogue with your business partners and building that trust and building that trust through validation of data and, and showing that you have this understanding of the business, that's a massive part of our roles. Next slide. So what's holding us back? I want to point out every organization is different. We all have different levels of learning in terms of what these advanced technologies are. But there's a few areas that we wanted to cover today. First, I think industry buzz about the future of finance is causing a lot of confusion, right? You go on TV, you hear advertisements. We're throwing around these terms like predictive analytics, machine learning, and AI. And we may not necessarily understand the differences between them. Or worse, some organizations and some folks may think that they're the same thing. Well, they're not. Another thing that's adding to this confusion, I believe, is software vendors. Folks who are out there promoting this quote unquote push button mentality, right? That they can produce for you a model for every single aspect of your business with a push of a button. Well, when it comes to ML, and we're gonna talk about that, it's, it's just not true. In fact, when you get into thinking about machine learning at a sophisticated global organization, right? Various geographies, various products, various product categories, various regions within where those product categories sit, it's actually really complex, and we're gonna talk more about that today. And third, between all the industry buzz and push button mentality, I think many of us are creating expectations that may just not be realistic. For example, if we think that we're going to be grabbing models that are 99.9% .9 accurate with a push of a button, or that predictive analytics or ML are going to replace all of our roles in FP&A, like that, that adds some anxiety to things, but it also creates false expectations. Our CEO at OneStream, Tom Shea, he's got a great quote about this. I'm going to steal it uh, shamelessly. He says that predictive analytics and ML, it's not going to be like Skynet from what you see from the Terminator movies, for those of you who know that, right? There's, there's not this computer that's going to be around in the next few years that's just controlling everything we do. For ML, for machine learning to take hold, for it to have high value, what's really important is us. It's our human intuition. And so it takes the ability to take incremental steps to build that trust leveraging these process, right? It's about the convergence of people and technology and how we work together and work side by side. Very important. Next slide. And so we want to start off this discussion by really dispelling a few of these myths around advanced analytics. The first, I want us all to walk away today with this being crystal clear. Machine learning and predictive analytics are not the same thing. And though predictive analytics and ML can help and solve some of the same business challenges, like looking at a monthly forecast, for example, traditional predictive analytics will just not give the same level of business insight that ML can, okay? The second, and this is important too, if you're out there doing your diligence, and you all are, your finance leaders, if there's a vendor out there that's telling you that they can do machine learning across your business, through your hierarchy, with a click, be really skeptical. Because as we're gonna talk about, there's not really a one size fits all for this. This is about adding human intuition into this. It requires continuous investment 
both in your personnel, in those business partnerships, in infrastructure, to capture this and grab continuous value, right? We have to take human intuition, turn that into data, grab that data, bring that into very um, advanced modeling. Those models need to be trained. They need to learn. Very important. They're not the same thing. No such thing as a one push button click. Next slide. So here we just want to point out a few of the differences. So these next two pages will be focused on some key differentiators between predictive and ML. In general, though it's possible, most predictive models are not going to grab external data. It's possible, but most are not going to do this. Why is that? Because there's a time and a cost for all of you as leaders to understand which variables are important to you, right? In fact, a lot of these external variables, things like oil prices as an example, interest rates, Bureau of Labor information, GDP, this is actually free. You can get this for free. So the question is, which of those are meaningful to you? And then once you find these variables, you'll need a way to clean the data, to stage the data, to bring them into your model, to keep your models fresh. So the bigger and more important here, point here, excuse me, on predictive is that these models are static, okay? And by static, what it means is that the variables used in these models do not change. So you're essentially relying on past performance and history to produce a future result. So in many ways, predictive analytics, it's, it's very advanced math. A lot of us have learned about this in our statistics class, and clearly software is helping rationalize that and bring that forward through automation. And I don't want to discount this. At the same time, predictive models can be a very powerful way and cost-effective way to do what? What did we talk about earlier? To drive dialogue, to do this at a generalized trend level within your business and drive that conversation with your business partners. The higher level within your hierarchy you're looking at for those models, the better they're gonna perform. And we're gonna talk about this in the next section. But taking a step back and back to that core question we asked originally, at any level, if you think about what FP&A is trying to achieve, there's nothing bad about having a, statistic, excuse me, a statistically significant and unbiased forecast scenario to compare to. There's nothing bad that can come out of that as a business partner. And so those are a lot of the ways that within FP&A, we're going to be leveraging predictive analytics. Next slide. So, so these are really technical topics and really important for FP&A leaders. And so it's, it's easy when you think about these in a vacuum to, to, have, to be discouraged, right? So I think it's really important to have a strategic vision in mind, but be comfortable starting small. And by starting small and, and focusing in on the business drivers, as Alex and the team have done really well, how do you drive action? How do you focus on where you can create that dialogue? That's incredibly important, right? So if you start small, build trust, that trust can permeate throughout your organization. Predictive analytics, as we talked about, and machine learning are not the same thing. This is not about 100% accuracy or replacing jobs. It's about finding a new way to ask why. And when you do that, be consistent. My old CFO used to tell me, beat the drum. That's really important as you think about building trust. It's about leveraging human intuition to drive that performance alongside your technology. And to point out, you guys know this, big companies out there with heavy cost of goods and large inventories, every 1% of your forecast accuracy matters, right? So through this consistency and through beating the drum, you have an opportunity over time to really impact the business. So just a couple final thoughts for you all today. So thank you so much for giving us the opportunity. Oh, thank you so much, Scott, for sharing your insights with us. Thank you.